what you are looking at here is a PC. I just want to get that clarified right away because it might not look like a typical PC. It is anything but typical actually, but I assure you all the components inside are off the shelf. But mind you, I had to check some of them because as we shall see in a moment, there is a lot that is not standard practice with this PC. If I was a guy with a different disposition here, I would start with the insults and pejorative expose, but after a lot of thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that this isn't a troll PC, nor is it an art project. What is most likely is, or was in this case, is a person's pride and joy, so I thought it is appropriate to try to do it justice. But as we shall see, after a few faint glimmers of hope, in the end there wasn't a single part that was salvageable from this PC. I decided that the best way to get all the components inside is to start from back and get going by cutting the thousands of cable ties. While I am doing that, I can tell you what I managed to learn about this PC. It is called the Beast 4 and I know that because it was written on the side of the PC. It is incredibly heavy and I just don't mean that hyperbolically, it is heavier than a full modern floor to ceiling server rack and it is so inefficient it is breathtaking. And while I'm still cheerfully cutting cable ties, don't worry I did this for about 2 hours before I finally gave up, there is plenty of footage to occupy the time, I found out that this is an x99 based machine that came to me without a CPU. It had two water cooled GPUs, one Radeon Fury Nano that I will get into in a minute and one R9295X dual GPU. Now you might be asking why is this machine running two GPUs with three GPU cores between them? No idea, but even back when this PC was new that would have been a very poor choice of hardware, not to mention very expensive. What else? It has a 750 watt good quality PSU, about 4 pumps in the same loop of wildly different flow rates, and I say about 4 pumps because there might have been others that I've completely missed. But no matter, they would definitely end up gating each other. I counted no less than 6 radiators, again some of them cooled with what looked to be Peltier coolers that were super glued onto heat sinks. But that, that's all to come. It was about this time, a good hour into my attempted teardown, that I realized that every cable was not only zip tied in place with at least 15-20 zip ties, and no that's not exaggeration, that's per cable, it was also super glued or in some cases something akin to sugru was used to hold it in place. It was at this point that I thought to myself I have to scale back my ambition to save components from this PC because every cable that I tried to pry apart came off with its respective pins, but little did I know I would end up employing a massive crowbar to finish the teardown. I think everyone got the gist of how the back of the PC is, so let's move to the front. Also, needless to say, a crowbar should never be required to do any sort of PC maintenance whatsoever. I started off by trying to remove the 295X because there was a very slim chance it might work. It ended up that the cold plate were super glued in place which probably killed it, but I had no way of knowing that at this stage, so I am gingerly cutting all the components around the GPU. I quickly realized that every time this PC sprung a leak, the owner would super glue the area, then wrap it all in paper towel, super glue the hell out of the paper towel, and finally paint it black with a rattle can. If that sounds a bit insane to you, well it does to me as well. But remember that every single cable and component is super glued in place. It is effectively impossible to do any sort of maintenance on this PC, so I guess this was the next best thing. Spoiler alert, I am as sure as I can be that one of these joints is what eventually shorted out the PC, as I found very deep down the belly of the beast, pun intended, a distributor board that was burnt to a crisp. If you don't know what it is because your PC doesn't come with it, well, most PCs don't come with it because it's really not required. Now that the GPU is out, it's time to see what else is in here. By this point I wasn't really trying to salvage anything, but was more driven by morbid curiosity. That and the fact that the PC dripped red liquid all over my beige carpets in the hallway, so I wanted to make the thing suffer. Next, I cut out the CPU block and one of the many radiators. I was surprised that after most of the components were purchased from Aqua Computer, which is a reputable German brand, plus at least like 10 controllers and flow monitors from the same company, the CPU block was something that looked like it came from Shenzhen's dustbin. And this is where things get even weirder, if it's even possible. Do you remember I mentioned in the beginning that there are what look like Peltier coolers? Well, here they are glued to the back of those distributor blocks, yet with another CPU block glued on top of distributor blocks that are already running cold water. I can't even begin to offer a guess as to why these are the way they are installed-ish. 
Don't get me wrong, this is ridiculously inefficient, but I must give the guy a thumbs up for creativity here. After this, I continued taking stuff out. All of it unfortunately went into the bin because it was unusable. I was pulling out pump after pump that were linked together by very expensive fittings that were simply chained together alongside controllers, voltage monitor, like a lot of voltage monitors, RGB controllers and all sorts of other controllers looking things that I had no idea what they did or what their purpose was until I googled them. And that's kinda saying something because I've been building computers for well over 20 years now and this is just on a different plane. So I mentioned at some point I'm gonna go back to that R9. I managed to get it working after cleaning all the corrosion and reflowing some of the VRM components. Unfortunately, while it ran really well, the power delivery security gave up the ghost about 4 hours in while it actually playing Diablo 4. And this wasn't like a test or anything, I was really stuck into it, so I liked it. So, if there is one good thing about this whole endeavor is that they inadvertently managed to give a GPU a worthy death by using it for gaming instead of rusting away unloved. The other GPU unfortunately was a total loss as was every other single component that came out of this PC. They were all super glue auto commission. It broke my heart when I saw that even the very advanced aqua computer flow and temperature monitors were opened up and every single internal connection super glued. And to be honest, that's about it for the story. With one more twist. One of the hard drives that was still in this machine was working and there was a lot of data on it, including what looked like files full of private data, so I decided that instead of being some kind of digital peeping tom, I would permanently decommission it in situ for data protection, not that I could ever get it out. This is usually a very easy decision for me. The channel is called Ethically Sourced Hardware, not Privacy Violator 9000, but I must admit in this case I did have to fight an urge to uncover the original creator of this PC. But that is an unacceptable violation of privacy, so I guess we might never know who built this incredible, albeit very misguided machine. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.